My name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the Hesse. We have been working on our vocabulary vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book. The Hesse Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Also, in the event that you need help with the math portion of the exam. We already solved every single math problem that you will find in this book. If you need help with any of the math problems, you will find 50 tutorials, day 1 through 50, in HESI. If you need additional help in math, if you need more practice, there are 80 more videos in the series of T's. And as you know, the math on the T's and the math on the HESI, they are comparable. They are very similar. And there are 80 videos in that series in the event that you decide that you need more help, you need to work on more problems. Let's begin. Today is our lesson number 10 in the vocabulary series. The first word we're going to learn, as a matter of fact, it's not a word, it's a pair of words, a pair of words that are homonyms. A pair of words that are homonyms. We have learned, we have learned before the notion of homonyms, and if you wish to watch that video, just type in what are homonyms? Just type in what are homonyms along with my name, Kishwani. The video will pop right up. Watch that video where we learned the notion of homonyms, where we looked at several examples of pairs of words that are homonyms, words that are spelled differently, they have different meanings, but are pronounced in the same way. So we're going to start our today's vocabulary lesson with a pair of homonyms. And the words are. Discrete and discrete. Of course, discrete and discrete that's the whole point. They are pronounced in the same way. They are pronounced in the same way. Discrete. Discrete, when it's spelled in this way, it is an adjective. Well, actually, they are both adjectives. They are both adjective. Let's see what it means when the word is when the word is spelled with R E T E. When it's spelled with R E T E, that discrete simply means something that is not continuous. Something that is not continuous. Something something that is that is choppy, if you like. Something that comes in that comes in bits and pieces. Something that comes in bits and pieces. It's a term that you will come across in the mathematics textbook. Mathematicians talk about a function being a continuous function or a discrete function. A continuous function would look like this. If you draw a graph of the function, it will look like this. It's a continuous function. On the other hand, if you have a function where they, they tell you that value of y is this amount, let's say 3, uh, when up, up, to, up to when x is equal to 3, and then when x is more than 3, the value of y becomes 5, let's say, the value of y becomes 5, and up to, up to say 13, and then when x is more than 13, the value of the y becomes, say, 15, uh, 7, let's say. That's, that's, a, that's a discontinuous function. That's a discontinuous function. You see, it's a bit, it comes in bits and pieces. It should not have overlap. Of course, it cannot overlap. There you go. It's a bits and pieces. It's a choppy. It's, it's choppy. It's not continuous. It is a discrete function. Value of y y equals three as long as x is less than or equal to three from between zero and three. Then the value of y is five between as long as x is more than three but less than thirteen or less than or equal to thirteen, and then it becomes seven and so on and so forth. Anyway, it comes in bits and pieces. It's a discrete function as opposed to a continuous function. So that's one meaning. Discrete. That's a mathematical term as I told you. The same word, well not the same word, but the same pronunciation is used to describe a different notion when we talk about being discrete. If you say Michael is very discreet, it means to be, it means to be prudent. Michael is very prudent, he's very careful, you don't have to worry about him. Somebody who is very careful, to be careful, to be careful in in one's speech 
all behavior. To be very careful in one's speech or behavior. If, if, if I tell somebody, uh, yesterday, yesterday I was talking to Michael and I inadvertently, uh, I inadvertently I, saw, I slipped, something slipped out of my mouth. I didn't mean to tell him. I hope he doesn't tell anybody. I don't. I hope he doesn't talk to anybody in the in the firm about it. I really don't want anybody to know about it. To which the other person says, "Don't worry. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about Michael. Michael is very discreet. Michael is very discreet. He's not the sort of guy who's going to go about flapping his gums. He doesn't go around yapping. He doesn't go around yapping. He's very prudent. He's very careful in his speech and his behavior. Michael is very discreet. Similarly." If I tell you something, at the end of the conversation I tell you that I hope that you will not share this information with somebody else. I hope you won't share this information with somebody else. The other person replies, don't worry, I will exercise discretion. I will exercise discretion. I will exercise discretion. I don't know why I went there because I don't know how to spell the noun here. How to spell another? There you go. Discretion. To exercise discretion. Discretion. First the syllable is D, just like, just like before D. Crash. Shun. This crash. This crash and discretion. Don't worry about it. I will exercise discretion. In other words, you don't need to worry. You didn't. You didn't worry. I'm not going to go around flapping my gums. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to tell anybody. You, your secret is safe with me. Don't worry. I will exercise discretion. So that was it. That was it. Uh, that was a little lecture on on the word discreet and discretion. Uh, discreet and uh, uh, discreet as in choppy and discreet as in being prudent in one's speech or behavior. Let's move on. The next, the next so-called vocabulary words that you find in the book, and as I told you, we're going strictly in order, so it's there, so I'm going to talk about it. The next two words that we'll discuss are the next two words that we're going to discuss are they deal with circles. We'll discuss the notion of diameter as opposed to Circumference, diameter as opposed to circumference. Let's put them a little bit better. Very quickly, diameter versus circumference. I know it's a very simple thing, but the question is if somebody were to approach you and ask you what is a diameter. What is the diameter? Will you be able to articulate the definition? Will you be able to articulate precisely what that notion is? The notion, the idea, the concept of a diameter. If somebody were to ask us what is the diameter, we we'll simply tell them that it's the distance across a circle. It is, it is a distance, diameter is a distance, distance across a circle, across a circle as opposed to circumference which is the distance which is the distance around the circle that's it that's 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 it that's the that's the gist of it it is the distance across the circle this is the distance around the circle so if we have a circle if we have a circle there is a center a distance across the circle, right here, this is your diameter from A to B, but it has to go through center. It is a distance across the circle, that's your diameter. Therefore, therefore, another way that one can define a diameter is this way. We can simply say it's the distance across the circle, or we can say it's the line, it's the line joining, joining two points on a circle, but that's not enough. Going 
through the center going through the center it is important it is important that we qualify our statement by making note of this thing it has to go through the centers simply a line joining two points on a circle is not enough we have to qualify we must we must qualify our statement by saying that it must go through the center it must go through the center it must go through the center what does it mean what does it mean to qualify a statement I, I said just now that we must qualify a statement by saying going through the center what does it mean to qualify a statement I'm not going to go into too much detail I'm going to simply tell you which video to watch in the event that you're interested in expanding your vocabulary to qualify a statement means to add something to it, to put condition on it, to restrict it. Qualify. Day number 27. Vocab day 27. Like I said, if you are interested in the event that you are interested in expanding your vocabulary, improving your vocabulary, just type in, okay, th this one is out of this series here, not the HESI series, but this series right here. Just type in vocabulary words along with whichever test that you are preparing for. doesn't matter which exam you are preparing for. T's, S's, GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, whichever it is, just type in, for example, GRE vocabulary words or HESI vocabulary words, day 27, and that's another series. On that day, day number 27, we learned what it means to qualify a statement. To qualify a statement means to put a condition on it, to restrict it, to, to, put, uh, to, 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 to attach strings to it, put ifs and buts. Simply saying that diameter is a line on a circle that joins two points is not enough. Why is it not enough? Because we may have a situation like this. We may have a situation like this. Here is a point here, point C, and here is another situation here, point D, and another point. There is a line. That's a, that's a line joining two points on a circle. But that's clearly it's not a diameter. It must go through the center. It must go through the center. And that's the definition of a diameter. The question now is, what do we call lines such as that one? A line, a line that joins two points in a circle, but does not go through the center, has a name. Has a name. What is it called? Do you know? It is called a... It is called a chord. That's a chord. This is the diameter. How do we define circumference? Circumference is simply distance around a circle. Distance around a circle. Now, what, I want to, what we're going to discuss now is a phenomenon that we observe in the nature. Uh, it's a natural phenomenon. There are several. There are, there are obviously uh, uncountable phenomena, phenomena that exist in the nature. We're going to discuss one of those phenomena dealing with circle, which is the ratio between the distance around the circle, which is called the circumference, the ratio of the distance around the circle to the distance across the circle. That ratio has a name. That ratio has a name. That ratio has a name. The ratio of the spider may put it like that. It's a ratio. It's a ratio which is the distance distance across the circle to the distance around the circle. That ratio, that ratio is always, always, always fixed regardless of how tiny your circle might be, regardless of how humongous might your circle might be, regardless of the size of the circle, the way the nature created the universe is that it, it observes certain constant. These are called natural constant. This ratio that is the ratio of the distance distance actually it should be the way around this should go on the top distance around the circle should go on the top and I'll tell you why in a second distance around the circle and distance across the circle this ratio is always fixed and what you will find is that this ratio regardless of the circle regardless of the circle the distance around the circle, if you were to start at one point here, if you, if you were to go distance around the circle to the distance across the circle, if you were to take that ratio, you will find that 
if you were to travel around the circle, that distance that you will travel is going to be approximately three times, it's going to be approximately three times the distance from A to B. This, one more time, the distance across the circle is always approximately three times the distance across the circle. This ratio is about three times. And this ratio has a name. We call that ratio, what do we call that ratio? The distance across the circle, this, rather the distance around the circle to the distance across the circle, that ratio has a name. That ratio has a name and we call that ratio pi. And pi, pi as you know is approximately 3. Pi as you know is approximately 3. But what we're trying to point to point we're trying to make out is the point we're trying to make is this. This ratio is fixed, which means pi pi equals distance around the circle, which is the circumference, to distance across the circle, which is the diameter. And what we're saying is that this is approximately 3. Now which what happens? What would happens? We're going to take this equation. We're going to take this equation. I don't know why this one is turning into a math math lecture. And we're going to multiply both sides by d. If you multiply both sides by d, the d drops out, and what we find is the c equals pi times d. Pi times d. And of course, diameter is simply diameter is simply two times r. Two times r. Now the convention dictates, the tradition dictates, the convention dictates that if we have something like this, we have to put the numerical value first, then the constant, then the variable. So this pi times 2 times r is written as 2 goes first because it's, it's the numerical value, then the constant which is pi, and then the r. Do you recognize this formula? Do you recognize this formula? That's your formula for circumference. But this so-called formula for circumference it's not a big deal. People go around memorizing so-called formula for circumference. A simple derivation, a simple manifestation of the fact that the distance around the circle is always about three times distance across the circle. And that ratio is called pi. And from there, we get this formula. Let's carry on then. I don't know why I, we talk so much. Let's go on then. Next point we want to learn is First syllable is di, dilate, dilate is the word. What does it mean to dilate? Dilate simply means to, to enlarge or expand, to enlarge or expand. For example, right before, for example, you might say that right before, right before my eye examination, the doctor put some liquid in my eyes to dilate the pupil. That's what they typically do if you go to eye exa uh, exa if you go for an eye examination. Notice how I'm saying the doctor because I don't know what the doctor is called. Uh, optometrician, something like that. Uh, anyway, whatever the doctor is called, uh, which I'm not going to pronounce again because I know I butchered it. The eye doctor, let's call him eye doctor. If you go to the eye doctor for the eye examination, he makes you sit down in this chair and the very first thing he or she will do, uh, will do is to put few drops in your eyes to expand the pupil and they call it to dilate the pupil. The, the, the process is called dilation of the pupil. So to dilate the pupil, to expand the pupil so that the doctor can see it properly, that's what it is. Dilate simply means to expand or to enlarge. To expand or to enlarge. The next point we want to learn is Again, the first level is same, di, and the next level is loot, dilute. Again, this is the word. What does it mean to dilute? Oh, here I just now I pronounce it differently. I said dilute, here it says dilute or di dilute. I'm not so sure about it. I should have done a better job in it. I suppose it can be pronounced either way, dilute or dilute, di dilute. To dil I'm going to pronounce this as dilute. Dilute means to weaken, to weaken, to, to make it weak, to weaken the, the potency 
of a fortress simply means its strength. How potent something is means how strong something is. To decrease, to weaken, to lessen the potency, the strength of a liquid, of a liquid or a solution is called uh, means to dilute it. If you dilute solution, which means you are weakening the strength of it. It's no longer as strong, it's no longer as potent. To lessen the strength or purity of something. To, to lessen, lessen come, comes from the word less, to make it less. To lessen the strength or purity of something. To thin or to reduce the concentration of a solution. To thin, to thin or to reduce the concentration of a solution. To dilute, to dilute. At the job interview, at the job interview, they asked Michael, they asked Michael about his uh, morning routine. Well, what do you do in the morning after you get up? Tell us your morning routine. And Michael proudly told them that after I get up in the morning, I take a shower. And then I have a nice hearty breakfast with a large glass of orange juice diluted with vodka. You're still waiting to hear from them. Bye now.